Welcome, Welcome to, to Hack It. This, this is released, released May 5th, 2016, developed and published by Dan, Dan D. D. As you see here. Oh. oh. Sorry, Sorry, just, just one moment. moment. <laughs> this is uh, uh, messing with, with the... the... Uh, um, there we go. I was messing with that new microphone and had monitoring on because it sounded like garbage and I was trying to fix it. And I forgot to set it back, so I'm listening to myself, which is never recommended. All right, Hack It presents players with a fully immersive hacking experience. You'll meet characters, find out things you never imagined, including interactive apps that will give you the power to shut down servers and retrieve passwords of all things. Um, this is marked as Indie Casual Adventure and Simulation, so we do have a hacker simulator on our hands. We... Ugh. Can you hear that? No, I, indeed you can. <laughs> All right, then. There we go. Uh, let's first uh, stop that. Um, audio level. Oh, there's one audio level for music and sound. Well, then I guess we have no choice. We'll leave it as it is. New game. <laughs> Hello, I need to test your hacking skills to make sure you aren't a script kitty. Oh god, the music. Okay. <laughs> I'll at least turn it down for you. There's nothing I can do for myself, but I will turn it down for you. <laughs> ah, it's still. It's... okay. Alright. Equilibrium. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we have here some kind of simulated terminal, although there are... Um, so... Uh, if you look at the screen here, there's this common effect that uh, is used these days uh, to make things look a little retro and so on. It's the scan lines and tracking that you see here. There's a little bit of blurring. I don't know if you can pick it up on the video, but um, that is not something that you would get in a typical terminal. Although, you know, there's a myriad of malfunctions that could happen with old monitors. Like, for example, the old CRTs had issues with burn-in and... Uh, so on, uh, but the scan line thing is something that happens with the uh, VHS tapes, so um, All right, and a script kitty of course is a uh, An epithet a derogatory term for people in the hacking community that don't have skills They can just basically run pre-made tools and so on it's something of a misnomer in today's world of cybersecurity and hacking because the way exploits work is exploit packages are distributed and often used and since um, Basically, everyone uses them. I guess one could say everyone is a script kitty. Hold on, just a moment. What is going on with this audio source? Oh, okay. I see. All right, so anyway, we're not going to linger on this, and I'm not going to give you the whole background here because I got things I got to do today. On the right hand side, you'll notice some connection details that show connection status IP. Okay. That's not what connection status means, but okay. Device name, ID, and what context you're scanning with, scan type. So we have uh, not connected. We are not connected to any networks. We, no I, no device found, okay. And scan type wireless, fair enough so far. Not exactly accurate, but we'll go with it. You also see some more details above, like the name of the application, .mef, and also where that application directory is locally on the machine f colon hack tools cont dot mef so we are running prepackaged exploits and tools and he's checking to see if we are not a script kitty it sounds like that is precisely what we're doing okay let's connect to a demo device i set up we want to make a connection and browse the files if the connection is accepted you'll see some commands at the bottom daz machine local device so we're going to be connecting to an id jacket what the fuck um, IP 255, okay, uh, 14, okay, so the way that IP addresses work is it's a, <laughs> it's a 32-bit identifier, and that 32 bits is broken up into four octets. Number one, octets are delineated in identical fashion. So we have a colon and then periods. Periods are a very common way of delineating these octets. But to have a colon and then periods, uh, no. Uh, no, 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 no. And also, the highest number that can appear in an octet, because an octet is eight bits, 
or one byte is in decimal format from zero to two five five. So that's the highest number you can possibly get. So this four three two is an impossible number in, in IP. So, okay. Now, as far as my ID being jacket, um, I, 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 I will not comment on what precisely we are doing in this game in our off time. Looks like you're in, kiddo. Wow, I had to do nothing at all. Now, if you hit the Hackett button, you will start the download process. I see no Hackett button. Oh, I see. That's not a Hackett button. That's a Hack button, and it's covered by uh, tracking errors here, but that's fine. Okay, I clicked Hack. All right, nice. I'm looking at the debug info you're downloading. What? All right, nice. I'm looking at the debug info. You're downloading the files now. That's, I, don't I don't know where. Maybe English is not uh, Dandy's uh, primary language, so I'm not going to... I never like to comment on issues with grammar or syntax, but I just if I'm stumbling over the words, it's because the syntax is wrong. I mean no offense by it. Um, also notice that the uh, tracking errors that we're experiencing on the screen are going right on through this plane right here, except the text that is displayed here is mysteriously unaffected. Tracking errors would affect, it's a, it's a screen, it's a display issue. It's not a, uh, it's not like old VHS tapes were able to, you know, uh, you know, per, per pixel or something like that, do some kind of correction. That's not, not what happened. But anyway, I'm lingering too much on the stupid track line. Sorry. Um, debug info. Okay. I guess we're downloading some debug uh, uh, logs or something. I, I don't know. Files can take some time to transfer depending on the size and will auto pop up normally when completed. Okay, well then. Viewing hello.txt. Uh, I gotta say the effect that they're putting in the game here. Oh, I didn't have a chance to read it. Uh, anyway, the effect that they're putting on the screen with that text that popped up made it very difficult to read. Very annoying. You probably think you're the greatest right now. Well, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but no, I'm pretty terrible, to be honest with you. But the truth is, the machine was easy and has no security. No firewall machines are easy to breach, especially if you're hooked into them via cable. A good hacker is not someone who can hack easy machines. A good hacker is someone that's able to breach the solid stuff and still be untrackable. Uh, and again, the text is completely unaffected by this. I, I'm sorry, I keep focusing on the effect because it's so annoying and it's just... Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, but yes, I do have something that I wanted to say here. So, okay, first of all, the concept of a good or bad hacker is often one debated in the community and has been since its inception. The term hacker, which we currently associate with uh, a certain type of computer criminal, um, originally began in the 60s and 70s at MIT among model train enthusiasts and um, these were the people at MIT who were in the model train club but were also working on some of the first major computing projects that gave us you know the personal computer and networking and printers and all this other good stuff um, and back then a hacker was somebody who was able to utilize what they had available uh, for creative solutions generally when it came to modding their model train sets that term uh, because they were working on also the first computer projects or computing projects um, was then applied to people in that community who, you know, because there's a lot of crossover between those two groups, right? Uh, who would do the same thing, but for computer systems. So a hacker was just somebody who came up with a creative way to solve a problem and, and really not much else. Now the term did evolve, but what is a good hacker and what is a bad hacker is often a useless delineation because it's not really the kind of thing... It, there's a lot of people who like to put their own sort of uh, uh, gatekeeping, um, their border border maintenance mechanisms, as they're called, um, over certain areas where they consider themselves to be domain experts. But it's a useless sort of delineation to begin with. A good hacker and a bad hacker, uh, unless we're talking in terms of ethics, as in the delineation between black, gray, and white hat hackers, is really dumb. Um, and a good hacker you know, in in that regard, it would be not be, this doesn't apply to that at all. I suppose you could say that someone is clever if they're able to uh, find a solution to a more difficult problem, but that's not really necessarily about intelligence. It's a part, it's, I mean, it certainly requires a lot of knowledge, but it also requires a lot of creativity 
um, and also a lot of motivation and inclination. And this is just a confluence of factors that have nothing to do with whether or not someone is good or bad at being a hacker. I mean, you can control certainly the amount of information that you know by learning new things, but inspiration is a more illusory concept. There are people who are simply better at coming up with creative solutions, regardless of the situation. Those people will have a leg up. It doesn't mean that they're not good uh, or that they're or that the person who can do that is better in some fashion. That's just simply not how it works. Uh, but anyway, this game isn't implying either way. I just thought since the topic came up, I would mention that. So if you find yourself in a situation where you believe that you're not good enough, uh, just remember that you can control what you can control and go on and keep learning. Uh, keep d deep diving and, and having fun and doing it. Um, but don't feel bad if you don't come up with that creative solution, all right? Because it's a confluence of factors. Right place, right time, right person, right skills, right mindset. All of that goes into uh, uh, the entire creative process, the process of hacking, okay? Let's try that again. This time with a, with, I'm sorry, this time with firewall enabled. Not a firewall, with firewall enabled. All right, so this time I have to click the button, but I have to click it extra hard because there is firewall. Here. See, now you can't connect because the firewall is blocking the auth. Okay. There's a few ways around this. You can make more lines on the connection and make a spoof ID that tricks the machine into thinking the base machine is making the request. Or we can flood the network of the machine and go in through Wi-Fi. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. Just warming up the flutter now. Give me a few seconds. Don't press anything. Okay, but I get the distinct impression that you do want me to press next. It's been a few seconds and you've done nothing, so I think you do want me to press something. You want me to press this. Okay. Flood. Okay, let's see if it works. Um, I am, uh, the machine is vibrating violently. It has stopped vibrating, and so... Okay, the entity node is down, lol. Okay. Even though the entity node is not appearing, you can still breach in. Go ahead. Alright. Hack. Looks like you're in. <laughs> I'm in. You're reading this because you managed to ha Okay, that's too fast. It's too fast, I couldn't even read one line. Okay, awesome, you took down the firewall and actually managed to get the file again. Nice one, kid. <laughs> Thanks, old man, I guess. I forgot to tell you about disconnecting it. If you don't, you risk being traced if you leave it connected too long. Right? Okay, that's it for the tutorial. I have a mission for you. Okay, before we do that, the whole disconnecting so that you can't be traced. Um, uh, no. Um, when you when you connect to any network, uh, the chance that you are leaving forensic evidence is uh, absolutely certain. Um, there's going to be some trace of your connection, and that's going to be in the local logs, which may or may not be in one central location. They, they, I mean, what I'm getting at is there may be some kind of log aggregation, which means that the logs will very quickly be in multiple locations in all, uh, various different ways. Um, in addition, that all, you know, there's going to be logs on the routers, there's going to be logs on the endpoints, there's going to be logs everywhere, um, to one degree or another. Um, and simply disconnecting does not remove any of that forensic information. Right? They'll still, they'll still know. Uh, you know, you, the uh, well, various amounts of information, the uh, origin IP for the request, uh, possibly, um, you know, host name, possibly MAC address. You know, there's all kinds of information that will be sent that is necessary in the process of connection that in order to even broker a connection, information has to be exchanged and that information is likely to be retained. So simply disconnecting isn't going to do it, which is why it's important um, if you are to remain anonymous to make sure that you take steps to ensure anonymity before connecting to any unknown networks. Alright, what's the mission? Okay, I have a mission for you. We're going to crack our way to a machine so we can fetch some passwords that are submitted. Okay, ooh, educate. What the fuck did it say? Edu Is this music from Terraria? Uh, what was that achievement I just got? I gotta know, because it said something educational. 
educational hacker successfully finished the tutorial model. Okay. It wasn't very educational, but that's fine. It doesn't build itself as educational. Okay, uh, blah, blah. Okay, we're doing a thing. Uh, then we can send some money. Our what? Okay, first you need to send the fetcher through the server to the machine. We're on a proxy link, so we won't be traced. Hopefully. Okay. So, we have a local device connecting to a proxy server, and then there's Elite Comp as our target. This is one way uh, that you can have a layer of abstraction between yourself and a target in order to try to preserve anonymity, but then um, that anonymity is only assured in so much as the security of the proc server can be assured, um, which is to say not much. Also, it doesn't take into account various other um, ways of identifying uh, or connecting information that, that could be traced back to a local device, um, even through a proxy. So, you know, this is a thing, uh, but it's not everything, is what I'm saying. Okay, the file's being loaded into the server. It's nearly processed on the server. Hold a sec. Okay, we're good. The config info seems to be correct. Okay, if you say so. Push the file up the pipe to the machine. It should pass through the proxy with no issues. Well, one would hope. Otherwise, it's not a very good proxy, is it? Push. Hopefully, we'll make it onto the vice. There doesn't really seem to be a lot of game to this game. I'm mostly just clicking. It's a uh, click-through adventure story. A graphic novel, if you will. Okay, it's going to pull some saved passwords and send it back to us. Okay, let's do the thing. Password fetcher developed by NASB78. Sniffing passwords. Uh, passwords have been found. Bear lingo. Okay, I mean, sure. Passwords. Ha 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 There's some secure passwords, XD. Oh, you ruined it. You ruined it. I was just starting to like you. No, I don't. Here we have an IP address that has five octets. That's definitely one too many, but at least they're only using dots now, and at least they're all within the acceptable range for the uh, 0 to 255. Um, available, let's say, expressible bits. How about that? Let's just use that term, expressible bits, 0 to 255. Okay, I don't need you to repeat them. They're right here. I can see them. And actually, I mean, he's complaining that these passwords aren't very secure, but, I mean, compared to many passwords I've seen, they're not terrible. Like, uh, IV, I aming at. That's not a terrible password. Um, Bear Lingo uh, 1227 is at least alphanumeric. I mean, ideally, they would have entropy requirements that required special characters as well. Grill Slayer and Jameson, even though they're only alpha, um, still, as far as the potential for passwords to be brute forced, I mean, you could do worse. This is a non-standard spelling of Jameson, so at least there's that. And Grill Slayer, while both are common English words, there's no space, and the likelihood of them appearing together seems relatively low. I'm not saying that they couldn't be brute forced, because they most certainly would be, and I don't know if these exact passwords happen to appear on common password lists like Rockyu. But if they don't, then they're just fine as far as passwords go in the scheme of things. They certainly could be better, of course. But if you look at the most commonly reused passwords, I mean, if you look at passwords from data breaches, it's always stuff like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. As a matter of fact, we can tell when cybersecurity is improving, at least in terms of requiring stronger passwords, because if you look at the history of common passwords found in breachers, we'll see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 at one point. And that's not because people are choosing stronger passwords, it's because that means that people started requiring stronger passwords. Now, 8 is not enough characters for a password, I'm not arguing that. But my point is that in terms of, ha ha ha, look at these bad passwords, you know, password one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on are terrible passwords. Those are definitely ones that are worthy laughing at. This is not really worth laughing at. I mean, just because somebody doesn't have, you know, a, uh, a 64 character, um, you know, passphrase with uh, alphanumeric and special characters and so on. These, these are, what I'm getting at is these are, these are kind of fine. You know, they're definitely not good, but they're definitely not, oh my God, what losers, what losers, they can't remember long passwords. If the password is correct, we can send some money our way. So we're, we got we, we managed to sniff passwords. So uh, people authenticating on this machine. I'm guessing that this is 
it says Lee Comp, but this might be some kind of network device or something. I don't know. But we we managed to capture passwords in plain text, and we're we're kind of hoping that they also go to their bank accounts. I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, open that app. I'm ready to steal. <laughs> money fetcher. I thought it said money filter for a second. Okay, the process is running. Do so. Let's get rich, folks. Then I can afford another octet on my IP address. <laughs> Loading passwords.txt. Attempting access, changing email ID again. Oh my god, that's a lot of money. Uh, okay, you decide how much to draw, kid. Okay, well, why wouldn't we do all of it? I shouldn't have taken it all? Why not? You didn't tell me why not. Oh, this user is angry at you for being too obvious. How is that any more obvious than withdrawing a small... I mean, it's true that sometimes they'll they'll do a test. Uh, when, when modern wire fraud is committed, uh, sometimes uh, when we have, for example, card skimmers or something like that, they'll do a small test transaction to see if the card is still valid and maybe if it's gone noticed. But generally speaking, you know, after a small test transaction, which usually amounts to like going to an ATM or something, or going to online banking and just doing a transfer between accounts, so not even a, uh, a withdrawal, they'll do a small transfer between accounts, uh, then they'll just withdraw all of it, because why wouldn't you? You know, what's the point in slowly bleeding someone dry? It just gives them more opportunities to detect that something has happened. You know, sooner or later they're going to notice. I guess it depends on the attack and the target because there there are something. But user wants to attack you but wants to hold off. Okay. Um. What? You want to fucking fight about it? Let's fight. Yeah. Screw you. You're nothing but a keyboard warrior. I have, I'll have you know, I can click buttons with the best of them. Put those keyboard strokes to something more productive, kid. User thinks you're a script kitty and a keyboard warrior. Oh, <laughs> well, God. This anonymous user thinks I might be a script kitty or a keyboard warrior. My entire worldview is shattered. I really need them to like me. Um. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Screw you, I ain't no I ain't a script kitty. <laughs> you are angry and feel like, oh, no, I don't. Whatever. I'm not going to stand around and debate with you. We have work to do if you still want to do that. Whatever. You are annoyed but still want to work. No, I don't. I don't want to go to bed and I don't want to work with them. What the hell? Okay. You know, they're kind of forcing me into it there, aren't they? Holy shit, there are 50 achievements for this game. Morning, kid. Time to rise and hack. We have some new tools, but we're only going to be using the one today. Okay. Well, this application isn't going to work with email grabber, so we're going to have to run through the desktop. Is this... what is... okay. Speaking as if we have been using email grabber. You can exit, kid. No, I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. Okay, fine. This is a very linear experience. Oh, okay. Say... oh, the fucking scan lines. And the graininess, and the tracking, and the, your trials... okay. Okay, I got... Well, that's why there's 50 achievements. They're giving me an achievement for, you know, like, anything. Alright, email grabber developed by Xforcer676 and Skullbreak. Searching mailbox database scanners found one email password reset. Hellingracket at scrapmail.net. Uh, okay. Press the quote-unquote enter key to reset the user account password. The enter key, if that is your real name. Password has been reset. Please enter a password. And well, of course, we will pick the strongest password. Password one. Oh, God, it's gotten worse. And notice the text is unaffected by this. Hey, kid, you might want to check your computer. Oh, I'm not joking. You'll want to check the computer. Anyway, I'll let you check the computer. Oh, so... Alright, I don't know what I did. Is that a game over? Did I somehow get a game over? Oh, no, okay. Virus.meth. Oh, goodness, he got me. Have fun! Um...
Uh, have we taken a turn here? Are we about to enter the back rooms? Oh, shit. Oh, I saw you. Come here. There you are. Code green. It says code green, and the description for the achievement is red. Code green, red. You won. Well, that was a brain buster of a puzzle, but can we uh, maybe... Can we maybe not? Okay. Yep. Girl. Don't worry, I can help fix your computer. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Um, question. How can I trust you? Because your computer is under attack and I want to help you. That does not answer the question of how I can trust you. Okay. You're a girl on the internet, so of course I'll trust you. Uh, okay. Do you know who infected my machine? Well, probably the guy we insulted. I know the guy. I have his IP. He reached your machine and installed the virus. We need to shut this guy down and wipe your machine and reset your... <laughs> and reset your IP before he boots you off. Hold on. I'll set up a node server. I can view your machine. Okie dokie. I'm an idiot. Files are uploading to my end. ID Grill Machinery. Okay, they're showing up on my end. So this is uh, uh, actually uh, one thing I can mention here. So um, obviously the uh, the world of uh, of IT and STEM in general, although the percentage in terms of gender identity among students in college over the last ten years has been shifting heavily towards those who identify as female, meaning that. For the last 10 years, more and more uh, women are going to college and graduating, and fewer and fewer men are going to college and graduating. Uh, it is at this point, and this is 2022, sometime around September, it's about 60-40, which is a pretty pronounced difference when you consider that the general population is roughly 50-50, yeah? But in STEM fields and certain others, it still skews heavily towards male enrollment. Um, if you look in, like, for example, app dev or networking or any of that kind of stuff, you're, you're generally going to find that the classes are majority male identifying students. Um, however, this is one minor exception, and it's not much of an exception, but in the world of cybersecurity, um, the gender disparity is less pronounced. So typically in STEM fields, whereas in general college is 60-40, in STEM fields it's more like 30-70 female to male identifying students, or I'm um, probably at this point closer to 40-60. I'm sorry, I don't have the most recent numbers on the STEM field just in general. Uh, but it does tend to skew a little bit more towards the male identifying side. But in cybersecurity, it is a bit more even. And indeed, the field of cybersecurity in general tends to be more egalitarian than others. And the reason for that is because of what is known as the hacker ethos, which I'm not going to cover right now. But typically, what we can just kind of boil that down to is the fact that it's not who you are. Your offline identity contains baggage, and there's no need to bring that online. Um, it's not about who you are. It's about what you know, what you can do, and that kind of a thing. So you'll, you'll typically find more women and more minorities gravitating towards the world of cybersecurity than others simply because they get a fair shake and, you know, they, they you know, it's, it's a more welcoming sort of environment. Not that there aren't assholes everywhere. There certainly are. I've met my share. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the fact that this is a girl here that's connecting to us, I mean, this is definitely the developer kind of putting their own weird... This is definitely weird, what they're doing here. Like... It, 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 this all kind of originates from back when um, cybersecurity as a field, before it was a field, and I mean, this is a hacking sim, so particularly with early hackers, um, everyone was a screen name, and most of the people who were part of this initial cohort of what would develop into, you know, hackers and the hacker ethos were, were not like, they weren't status quo kids, right? It was the 70s and 80s. They were latchkey kids. They were coming home after school. Both parents were working. They let themselves in. They would, you know, make themselves a frozen pizza. And then they would uh, go to this place um, where, you know, in the real world, 
people didn't get them, they didn't really play well with others, people thought, you know, all kind. well, I'm not going to really get into all that, but um, suffice to say that they escaped into this world of computers where it didn't matter that they were losers in real life, or considered losers by other people in real life, I should say. Um, the computer just did what they told it to do, you know, and they could... It was an escapism kind of a thing. Um, and so they were just screen names, and uh, it didn't matter if you were male or female. It didn't matter if you were a minority. It didn't matter if you uh, were neuroatypical or any of that stuff. You could go online. The computer didn't judge you. Uh, the people on, uh, who were who are like-minded, you could have conversations with them that you couldn't have in real life, make connections that you couldn't have in real life. And suffice to say that all of this kind of kind of coalesced into all that. Not, not that things didn't eventually... Um, I'm not going to say, again, there's not any... Um, any like nothing derogatory has never been said um, in the world of, uh, of cybersecurity or anything. Like that. Of course not. There's biases everywhere, and eventually, even online in places where our offline identity truly does not matter, uh, we decided collectively as a culture to say, "Hey, you know that old baggage that we carry around that really is kind of destroying our society? Let's fucking bring that to a place where you can't even tell." You know. Um, so I'm not going to get into a deep dive on that. But suffice to say, this weird thing with the girl thing is definitely more of a gamer thing than a hacker thing. And it's weird. What's happening here is weird. The fact that there's someone who identifies themselves as girl, they have this magenta theme to them. Their ID of their machine is grill machine, machinery, machinero, and girl server. This is, this is fucking weird. I'm just going to call it out right now. I'm not okay with this. Just a basic virus hidden in your hard drive. It's gone now. You can boot into your computer. Wait, who are you first? You got an OnlyFans? I don't give my name out to unknown entities. <laughs> She's on to us. She knows we're an entity. You shouldn't either. Well, that is good advice. If hackers get your details, they'll dox you. Even script kiddies will. I'll boot in now. Thanks for the help. No problem. I left you something also. Boot. System is booting safely. Please do not turn off the machine. Software is looking into changed file system. Okay. Uh, very well then. Girl.meth. Of course. Reading meta from girl. Hey, if you want to join our hacking team, then you can. Well, I've proven myself to be more than capable so far, so I can see why you'd want to recruit me. We need new members, and it will give you the chance to take down the virus script kitty. Girl. I knew you'd accept the invite, since you didn't really have a choice. Well, that's... okay. Do we have to... do we have to keep doing this? Don't worry about it. If you need any help, let me know. You hope you can be useful and serve a purpose. I love how the game tells me what I'm feeling, you know, because so often when I'm playing a game, I get really confused about how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking, and it's really nice to have a game tell me, uh, just because I'm such an emotional mess that if I don't have that, it gets really hard to sort out. Sure thing. Actually, we're targeting Virus Man now. If we don't stop him, he'll stop you and eventually find us. IP. Well, that's not an IP. <laughs> well, that's not an IP address. <laughs> I'm not going to write that down because I'm assuming the game will take care of that for me. Oh, I totally forgot to introduce you to another human. Who, man? What? Idiot. Is, uh, their name is Idiot. Hello. Hey, mate. <laughs> Ahoy, matey. We call him idiot because he sounds funny. Well, that's not very nice. Can't help how you sound, man. Okay, so we need to disable the target server, Virus Man. But we'll just call him Target. Okay, sure. Okay, sounds great. Because if we don't, he'll attack you and he could try and find us also. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. The software we use is actually actually just got updated. It's better than ever. <laughs> yeah, we're in the beta branch and it's looking stable at the moment. Lol, we'll, we'll let you do the honors. 
Let me bring it up on your screen. Allow us access. This is how I got in trouble the first time. I apparently didn't learn my lesson, but okay. Uh, yeah, girl machine would like to gain access to your machine. This device needs for Okay, sure. Okay, you should see a new software pop up on your screen. Um, that is indeed what she told me the IP address was. Device name, user device, location, part of God. Oh, I should have known. Virus man is Portuguese. And I know if you ever see this big fan. Networking Nuker by Sanchez23. Network Flutter Device 244 pre-release byte. Nuke network, nuke button will say will spam packets of data. So this is ironic because they keep using script kitty as a derogatory term. Um, and literally the definition for the longest time of a script kitty is someone who would use an application known as low orbit ion cannon to target people for DDO. Oh no, low orbit ion, ion cannon is a DOS attack. High orbit ion cannon is a DDOS attack. But those two tools, I suppose. Like for the while, that was the definition of a script kitty. Someone who would who would use those tools to launch uh, denial of service attacks, and that's literally what we're doing. So no, I ain't no script kitty. I'm gonna nuke a network. Okay, nuking the target. He's vibrating violently. We know this is already a good thing. It's exactly what we want. It would be hilarious if my IP address up there at the top just got more and more octets as we went. <laughs> Until eventually it was like fucking 20 octets and then a port at the end. Which, by the way, uh, this IP address here, uh, 168.163.3273, that is a colon. Now, if there is a colon in an IP address, that's where it should be at the end. And it wouldn't delineate another octet, it would delineate a port. So 22 in this case is a common port for FTP or uh, SSH. Target neutralized. We wiped him right off the Gibson. Just a smiley face. We need to loop the attack, but we need to disconnect, exit, and open up loopta.mef. Disconnect? Asoft. It's making me really hungry for quesadillas because of, you know, case, case of the case soft, case of, uh, what's zero movie? Uh, Um. Yes. Hold on, I'm going to turn this up so you can hear it. There is audio. I didn't, they slowed down the audio, so I absolutely could not understand what they were saying. I heard something about she's ones and zeros. Think about it, it's yes or no, I don't know. Read. This application will loop network attacks and keep them running in the background. Developed and distributed by J Kevin J. Hacking and Nelly Jelly 34. With some fantastic Lenny faces. Lenny faces, the epitome of hacking. Um, and I can't close this. Finding force path. Finding active attack nodes. Spawning spoof objects. Looping and disconnecting. Enabled loop. Create config lock. Not file if you want to say whatever well, attacks. Okay, I didn't get a chance to read it all. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, we need some help with getting a few pass whites. We're unable to mass brood on a. <laughs> We're unable to mass brood on a normal machine because it will cause the computer to crash. We we have a ROM disc for you. That's pretty lightweight, very basic, but it's perfect for brute force. <laughs> You'll need to boot out of your machine and load. Okay, so uh, all right, so brute force attacks can be very resource intensive, but uh, it is entirely possible to run one on a single machine without causing it to crash. Um, 
the amount of computing power you can offer is usually directly commiserate to the amount of essentially brute force attempts you can try at any given point, but generally the limiting factors in brute force attacks aren't going to have anything to do with the amount of computing power available. Usually those things are actually throttled by authentication protections on the back end. So the number of failed attempts before a lockout period, the duration of a lockout period, and so on. So essentially, uh, the only way that a that computing power would be a bottleneck is if there is no authentication protection whatsoever and you can essentially try as many passwords um, as as many as you want within a certain period of time without any recompense whatsoever. Now their solution to this is a ROM disk, ROM is read-only memory, which you may know uh, uh, from the olden days, excuse me while I tie an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time, uh, but a ROM disk you may know mostly as a CD-ROM, um, and you can, of course, have uh, OS um, uh, live boot disks that are on a CD-ROM. Generally these days they would be on a flash drive, but you can put them on a CD-ROM and you can boot to the uh, to the live OS and get a what is essentially a temporary operating system. So an example on this one might be like if you're if you want to preserve anonymity, you might use a live OS like Tails or Kali Linux or something like that, um, or Ubuntu or or whatever, uh, in order to essentially boot into an operating system that is not installed on the system and then that way if it's only existing temporarily in memory in that state then when you reboot that's all gone and since it's ROM you can't do any writing to the disk so you don't have to worry about you know any cleaning up any log files or anything like that at least in terms of the local machine but what it won't do is give you any more computing resources the computer that you're booting into even on a live disk will have the same physical components inside of it um, and uh, so that doesn't make any sense. This is just a uh, techno babble. You won't have internet access through the ROM because it's basic software. I mean, live boot disks because they're they're running on, they're not installed. Um, they're just running live direct off of that disk. Um, it's true that they do tend to have problems like that, you know, because there's. They don't necessarily come prepackaged with drivers. They don't necessarily recognize all hardware. Installed operating systems use drivers to connect hardware to software. Um, and so, you know, yeah, you you might not be able to access the internet if you don't have, you know, a driver for your ethernet card or something like that. That's possible. But um, because it's basic software, no, I wouldn't say that. I'd say because it's a live boot disk and it doesn't have drivers, but you can usually get those, right? Um, when, um, even though it's read-only memory when live boot disks are deployed, um, it is possible to configure them with a small amount of writable space that is essentially appropriated from primary memory. I've done this before uh, with Windows, believe it or not. Um, it is, it was a difficult process, but you can create a live boot Windows. Um, typically, live boot's going to be, you know, Linux variants. Uh, because they're lighter weight and easier to work with, but it is possible to do it with Windows. I've done it before um, for what we we termed a rescue disk because our uh, our service desk uh, obviously heavily invested in Windows and more familiar with that than any other operating system. So rather than give them uh, a Linux distro with the tools that they need to do in order to do basic maintenance on on machines that we can't boot, um, we gave them a flavor of Windows to use and. Um, Good fun. Good fun, that project. Anyway, I'm now babbling because I'm avoiding uh, playing this game. So. Crack OS Terminal emuli em em Emulator. 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 Below you'll find a list of available load disk. Brute ROM or corrupt? Well, I think we want the brute ROM. It is green, and um, I feel good about that. Help me. Okay, what's help me? To mass brute passwords, you need to start the process. If there is no brute server, you can define one in the back end. Okay, that sounds so easy. What could possibly go wrong? Oh my god. I'm in the bitstream, folks. I'm in the bitstream. I have been converted to pure data. I'm merging. The singularity approaches. My consciousness is being uploaded to the matrix as we speak. And you know what I learned after all these years? Ignorance is bliss. Okay. System has password strings, but needs further digging. Proceed to try... 
Proceed to try m methods. We've gone from green to a vaguely green cyan mix. We are definitely nearing the core. Do we have to wait for all this? I'm starting to actually get a little bit seasick. Okay. Hardware has overheated and system has shut down to prevent further damage. System temp error 45 AG. If the air if this error comes up frequently, you are pushing your hardware too much. Your cooling methods are good. Well, luckily, we can do a water cooling scenario. I happen to have plenty of Arizona iced tea. I'll pour it directly into the case. Debug report. System overheating core temp overheating temperature reads 120 C. Of all things, God, what a number. No more logs for this issue. Can you tell I'm uh, no longer invested in this? System is unable to restart to fix the issue. We recommend jumping back to an older version that is running and stable. The system has detected your hardware recently having problems. Well, we should probably let it cool down before we restart it because it is a heat issue. <laughs> One version found. System is reverting back to fix the problem. Definitely older versions of software will fix hardware overheating. Everybody knows that. It is physics, people. <laughs> hey kid, you might want. Oh, oh, here we are. We're back to this, huh? We're back to this. Oh god. Um. Well, last time I just kind of blew him off. Maybe this time we should actually do the thing. You tried to take me down and you failed a fatal flashback. Okay, we're getting achievements left and right. Things are moving so fast because I can't stop clicking. Yeah, you baited. You fell for the bait with your new script, kitty friends. You uh, baited. It would be awesome if you just checked the computer. <laughs> Where are your friends now, huh? Well, I assume... Alive and well. I have no reason to suspect otherwise. You feel like this has happened before? Um, well, uh, gee, I wonder why. I definitely... This is what they call deja vu. It's not actually what they call deja vu. But, hey, since we're sitting here in this terrible game, waiting for loading screens and just clicking through, uh, speaking of Deja Vu, this is a pretty good time to talk to you about the three Vus. Everyone, of course, is familiar with Deja Vu, that eerie feeling that you are experiencing something that has happened before, or that you've recovered a memory of a present or future time. It's not a good feeling to have, but it is a thing that happens to people. There's other vus, however, deja vu. There's also presque vu, which you may know best as the tip of the tongue syndrome, where you're trying to recover the memory of something and you know you know it, but you just can't quite recall. That is presque vu. And then there is gymne vu. Gymne vu is the phenomenon where you are doing something that you have done a thousand times before, but suddenly you simply can't recall how to do it because you have been on autopilot and you become cognizant of your activity and it occurs to you that you've known idea exactly how you do the things you do on a daily basis. For example, when driving and suddenly you're just kind of on autopilot and then all of a sudden you're like, my god, I'm operating this vehicle with the pedal and the brakes and the, uh, the shifter and the uh, steering wheel and whatnot and you're like, my god, how do I do this again? Alright, that's probably a bad case. If that happens to you when you're driving, go and see a neurologist because your death is probably imminent, but uh, you get what I'm saying. Screw you how! Fucking rude. I'm gonna hack you so hard when I get the opportunity to finally press the button. I am going to crush my mouse into my desk. You will feel it through space and time. Your ancestors will feel it in hell. God, these puzzles are just how does how am I supposed to do this? What am I? Einstein or something? God, it's it it's literally a puzzle designed for babies. I lose? Oh, God. Did I not click the right green one? Or was I not supposed to click... Was this a trick? Was I supposed to click the red one? Fix. The. Error. Well, luckily I have a fix uh, a mef file here. Virus removal. Well, thank God. Thank God they provided me with this. Well, of course I want a free scan. It's free. Why wouldn't I do it? Loading variables from data source. Reading message from entity ID 432. Oh, missed opportunity. Should have been 420. Or 42069. Nice, am I right? You need to backlog the machine back to last week. Then you can kill the virus. It turns out that Virus Man baited us with the IP. There is no way to prove I'm girl, but I hope you can follow my lead. 
Well, if you're a girl, then of course I will trust you. Command is requesting jump back seven days to a previous machine resource. See to confirm or well, I'm gonna press C. And hope she falls in love with me. Checking install route for system backup. This can take some time depending on the machine speed checking. One of my favorite things to do with my scripts whenever I write one is I will spend more time on the presentation usually than on actually doing the thing that needs to be done. And I'll have like <laughs> the the dot filling up thing uh, is amateur hour. I mean, I will do all kinds of stuff, uh, ASCII art, and, uh, and, and well, anyway. That's why I don't write many scripts, because I just uh, waste tons of time when I do it. <laughs> Searching relevant tags. Usually I'm so lazy that I will do ten times the amount of work to avoid doing something that would essentially eliminate me needing to do the job ever again by automating it. Um, like, I'm that kind of lazy, where it's like I'll do more work to avoid work because I'm that lazy. It's the, op the inverse, the upside-down version of, of laziness, but, you know, it's just part of who I am. Uh, <clears throat> and part of that reason is because I waste so much time on stuff that really doesn't matter. Like, I could spend five minutes writing a script quick, but no, I'll, let's make it 15, and we'll have it do a cool thing while we're waiting for, you know, calculations or output or, or whatever. Flush DOS. Well, we definitely want to do that. We definitely want to flush DOS. Mm. Flush DOS. Flushing DOS takes a long time. I think they meant flush DNS. I think that's what they meant. Not DOS. But I will not speculate. Psy Time Cache. Or Sidem Cache. Are they robbing me? Is it that kind of cache? Or do they mean C A C E? For cache. Cache. Cacherino. Uh, this is a uh, very. This is a game? This is a game? Found four backups in the space of seven days ago. Okay, well, we got. And we didn't get to choose one, so it doesn't matter. I've never played a game where I had to sit there and uh, await a script to run, but fair enough. Here we are, apparently seven days ago. Have I literally gone back in time? Network Fry, created by Forken Snipe, or Force Force Snipe, Force Snipe. The following device ha devices has been found: Delingo, Davo, device four three three four two, and a. Would you like to mass fry these targets? Well, I don't know why I'm doing it, but I don't need a reason to do things because um, I'm a force of nature. Frying targets and looping connections. Again, this is not interactive. I'm doing nothing. I'm just waiting and looking. This is... Uh, this is quickly reaching the end of my uh, patience. Obviously, this is not a hacking simulator. We have done nothing, nothing at all related to a hacking simulator. We haven't even been allowed to enter in uh, rudimentary commands into terminal. We're just clicking and watching things happen. So uh, this is going to be a do not recommend. If this were billed as a hacking adventure or a hacking story, or uh, I wouldn't even say a hacking puzzle because there's literally no puzzle. But if this were a hacking adventure story or something like that. We screwed up, we directed you to the wrong IP. Well, that's what I get for trusting the girl. Anyway, then uh, if this were a hacking adventure or a hacking story, then uh, it would be fair enough, I would say. Um, but uh, it's definitely not a hacking simulator. Um, next, I still had access to your machine since you only went back seven days, so I was able to, well, I didn't know you seven days ago. So I was able to still stay connected and upload Network Friday to desktop. Well, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. It's okay. You're an idiot and a girl. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We all screw up. You are open-minded, but are shaken by the last events. Oh, if you say so. Virus man, he'll be back soon. He's not gone forever. He could have con connection and he could have connection and machine. He could have connection and machine. But we bought some time. We've already increased our security, but you'll need to also. 
We've sent over a better application via FTP and upgraded your system software. I should be really concerned about all these hackers who are simply able to access my machine and send me things like this. Boot in and run... Oh, sorry, that's not an idiot. Oh, oh I'm, getting a phone, I'm getting a phone call. Oh, okay, where are we? Boot in and run that app. We need to stay hidden. You hope this works. Thank you for telling me about the field name. I don't know what I would do if not for you. Boot! <laughs> Login to desktop. Security setup. Patch. Read. What's read? This should help you how to use the patcher. You click on it, and then the game does the thing. And then when it's done, you get to click again to the next... Oh my god, here we go again. Oh, okay. So. Uh, what will it do? Patch will fix most issues and enable some proxy and DNS pointers. Okay, if you say so. I definitely want all of my DNS requests to go to wherever idiot wants them to go. Why wouldn't I trust somebody who's known as idiot? I would be an idiot not to trust idiot. This will also wipe space space any restores to prevent loopholes. Patch me. Lime frame. Resources. We are waiting. Waiting, we are doing nothing, we are waiting. System restart 210. Thank god I get to see the loading screen again. Gay soft. Making me hungry. Or quesadilla. I want that queso. Log into desktop. Security setup. Let's do it again. Because it seems to be all we can do. FTP local. Okay, we're FTPing local DNS configure. I don't know why we have to do that, but okay. Uh, FTP is a file transfer protocol. Usually that is used to download and upload files to remote computers, but we can, I suppose. I uh, ran the. Oh, sorry. That's me. I ran the software. The terminal said the process was complete. Yeah, you're good to go. Just check the debug logs. Oh, good. <coughs> okay, awesome. Sleep? Need help? Do you need any help with anything else today? Nope, it's getting pretty late for you, isn't it? Okay, I guess. You want to rest for the night? That sounds like a good idea. Sure, let's... We have been doing no hacking in this hacking simulator. We haven't even been doing the fucking, uh, clicking the button to hack people thing. But at least now there's an actual interactive minigame, I guess. I get to do this brain buster of a maze as a dream sequence. Is there any consequence for hitting the walls? No, there's not. So, it, there's literally no... Literally no reason. I why we thought what the kiss is unsolvable. There's no answer to the maze. I'm trapped for it. God. Uh, I think this game might be an insult to uh, the intelligence of anyone who plays it. Sorry, D and D. It's just not that good. I, I, I wish I could be more charitable, but it's not a hacking simulator. It's not a, even a hacking puzzle game. It is an adventure game, and I do see, you know, this... Okay, what happens if I hit the question mark? Oh, it opens the door. Um, and I'm not saying that this story isn't compelling, uh, but what I am saying is that this is not necessarily the best way to tell this story, so... Okay. I'm in. Oh, that was it? Okay, I was expecting at least the last one to be hard. Morning, matey! Good morning! Um, no, we're not going to work on our next mission. Uh, we're definitely done. We're definitely done. Alright, so, uh, it is mostly negative on Steam, and I can see why. It's not a hacking simulator. It's not a hacking puzzle game. It's a hacking adventure, um, which if it were billed as that would be fine, but it does say that it is fully immersive hacking experience. It's not, 
You'll meet characters and find out things you never imagined. Well, I did meet some characters. I didn't really find anything out, but maybe I needed to keep playing for a big reveal at the end. But that's fine. This isn't the kind of game that uh, that I would invest that kind of time in. Including interactive apps that will give you the power to shut down servers and retrieve passwords. That's uh, definitely a stretch. You get to click a button and it does the things for you, or you get to sit and wait while animations occur. Uh, let's check some of the negatives. Um, Impala. Played for half an hour. I love hacking Sims and I'm proficient in real life penetration testing. I own and loved Uplink and Hacknet. Hacknet being the best hacking sim I've ever played. We'll keep looking, Impala. There are better ones out there. Uh, Uplink is on my list. I haven't done that one yet, but I do have a copy and I will be playing it. I went into this with an open mind. This is more of a visual novel than an actual game. True. Yes, that is right. There are many games that are either too easy or make no sense in the context of the game. That is also what I see. There are achievements in Steam trading cards. Okay. Uh, price for what you're getting. Uh, worth 99 cents. Uh, oh, shit. I paid 14 bucks for this. God damn. Um, mini games that make no sense. Stream sequences. Yes, that is. I just experienced one of those. Unrealistic environment. Most of your time is spent clicking next. Yes, that is true. Uh, you just click buttons like download. Yeah, okay. Yeah, extremely tedious. Yep, 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 yep. Agree, agree, agree. Two out of ten. Uh, I guess. Would I feel differently about the game if it were 99 cents? Well, that's a good impression, me. Let me think about that. Um, well, I suppose, uh, since me asked, me will answer. Um, yeah, I suppose $14. I should, that was way too much for this game. Um, but you can get way, way better hacking sims for, for, for $14. If it were 99 cents, yeah, I wouldn't be mad. I mean, I'm not necessarily mad at it right now, but I definitely didn't get my money's worth. I'm definitely not playing this again, and it definitely wasn't worth $14. But if it were 99 cents, yeah... Yeah, I suppose that would be that would be more along the lines of okay, you know, not a big deal. So it still wouldn't be a good game. I still wouldn't enjoy it, and I still wouldn't recommend it. But I would feel a little bit less ripped off. Uh, this is one of the most annoying. Oh, sorry, Oscars. This is one of the most annoying games I've ever seen. The story is annoying. There's no gameplay. It's an epileptic it's an epileptic seizure hazard. Hated. I don't know about that, but okay. I I don't know precisely what triggers an epileptic. Uh, uh sorry, not seizure. Seizure. I don't know what triggers an epileptic seizure, but okay. The developer calls this a fully immersive hacking experience, but really it's just a bad visual novel. The story is lame and boring. Well, uh, the, <coughs> whoa, sorry. <clears throat> the story being lame and boring is entirely subjective. I didn't, I mean, it was boring. Uh, I didn't think it was really lame. You know, it was um you know a story about rival uh hackers and hacking groups and stuff and you know i i did get the option at least of trying to piss people off at one point you know that's all right um but yeah it's not a simulation it's not fully immersive uh or a hacking experience or any of those things kind of that was from nas by the way uh level 89 on steam that's a a high level i can't get rid of nas's thing i hovered over it and now it's there forever um i've had i have okay so thresher nat i have played games that were boring or frustrating i have played games that had uh, annoying or grating visuals i have played games that with stupid plot points okay but this and this does have all three it is boring uh the visuals and the effects are really bad um and uh the plot I suppose, like I said, not necessarily the best way to tell that story. Uh, wow. Um, Rude Renders has one product in their account and has only done one review, and it's this review, and uh, they didn't like it. So on Steam bought one game, this game, and reviewed one game, this game, and they didn't like it. Terrible. Not only does it give you a headache from moving screen, but also the gameplay at base is not good. I'm I, that's uh, you are you are a conundrum, rude. I want to know about you. You buy one game and it's this game. You review one game and it's this game. You play that game for 0.2 hours. And you feel strongly enough about it to leave your only review, and that review is this. The most non-controversial, 
<laughs> pardon if this is offensive the most non-controversial milk toast i didn't enjoy this game i don't like thing review in this whole page i want to know about you <laughs> who are you <laughs> You are either the most interesting or the most dull person in your neighborhood. I guarantee it. I can't tell which, and I need to know. Rude, if you ever see this, send me an email. Let me know about you. I'm curious. Um, Aradesh, 3K. What even is this? Okay, we got just tons of negative reviews here. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, most of them seem to be saying that they're boring. Uh, they don't like the story. Let's see some of the good ones. Yeah, let's sort them by the... Let's, let's sort out the, the good ones. I want to see what they say. Uh, review type positive, 36. All right, Idol Dev. 101 products, two reviews. This is one of them. Thank you so much for sharing. I enjoyed this game. It's more of a visual novel with choices and minigame elements than a puzzle game or hacking simulation, but I love visual novels and interactive stories. So I, I, if you are the kind who is into visual novels and stuff, I can see how you might enjoy this. I think that it's not the best. I mean, and I have played visual novels. I've done it on this channel before. And I, I you know, we have to judge them accordingly. If the developer didn't market this as a hacking sim, but as a visual novel, I have to ask myself, would it be good then? Um, no, not not great. It, you know, it's it's but it would be better. If I were judging this as a hacking simulator, absolute do not recommend. This is horrible. Not a hacking sim. Worst. One of the worst. Um, but as a visual novel, you know, I can't be mad at it. It's trying to tell a story. It's not doing it in the best possible way, but it, you know, it is a visual novel and would be trying, but it's not marketed as a visual novel. So I can't judge it as one. So, um, I disagree with this being a good visual novel, but if you do like visual novels, I can see somebody maybe getting into this if they're, if they don't mind the glitch aesthetics and they don't mind the, um, being led down a path, if they don't mind the game telling them how they feel and so on. Um, those are all, if this were a visual novel, those would all still be gripes I would still have with it. Awesome game. I wish there was more one review, and it's this one, Mento Zombie. I just love that avatar. I just do. Um, here we go. Somebody who's experienced over a thousand products and a hundred reviews. Sugani, the MVP here. Recommended for Achievement Hunters. Easy story. Marked achievements for the most part. This gets you a few cards along the way. As a game, though, I don't know. It's not the worst thing I ever bought, but it's far from the best. Well, when you have a thousand games under your belt, my guess would be that you have some real stinkers in there. And so I appreciate the relativity of your comment. After this game, every child considers himself a hacker and goes to scam your skins. Rommel, 5,000 accounts. 765 reviews. This is still... Positive Rommel. I question your judgment. I think that you may have left too many reviews and have played too many games. And this is what you have to say. I'm not mad at it, Rommel. You are an agent of chaos. A force of nature to be reckoned with. And I appreciate that. Done. Let's move on to the next one. 